Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Universe Podcast. Danny here today. I'm going to be talking about Golden Boy. So, Golden Boy is this old manga. It had an anime. Uh, from what I heard, it was only like six episodes or something. And that got dubbed, which was to my surprise. I actually heard the dub before in a song. And I don't know how I feel about the dub, but um, other than that, no. So, this is the manga. Only 94 chapters are translated right now. And the last time it was updated was, what, three years ago? So I don't think it's being translated anymore. But even if it was, like, say there's a new chapter tomorrow, I'm not going to read it, guys. I don't know. This is such a weird manga. It had, it, like, I was digging it in the beginning, right? And I was like, oh, cool. Okay, there's a story about this guy, Kentaro Oe. You know, he's just doing as many different types of jobs as he can. He's learning. He's just trying to learn everything. And at the end of every chapter, it always says, oh, you know, 25, 26 year old Kintaro, you know, dropped out of college, but he finished all of his college courses and he's just studying the world. I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, it has a nice um, aesthetic art style to it. And that was just the surface, the bare minimum. I thought this was going to be how the manga went, but no, oh, no. It goes a completely different direction at a certain point, and that's all it becomes. Even with flashbacks and stuff, it doesn't make sense to me at all. It doesn't fit the character Kintaro, and it's just, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this manga anymore, because it starts off with, oh, you know, he's learning some stuff, or, you know, he's that's all he's doing. Like He just wants to study. That's his motto is study, study, study. He does all these various things. Usually what happens is characters get pissed at him because he's messing up somewhere or something and he's just jotting down notes. And of course he is a pervert as well. So he's drawing like the three sizes of these females, this and that. And then when they're so pissed off at him, he says, okay, I understand and leaves. But then after he leaves, um, there's like all this progress happening and they're like, wait, what, what's going on? Who did this? Oh, that was Kentaro. And they're like, oh my God, no, I messed up. No, please come back Kentaro, you know? And then he's already gone at that point. Um, and that's pretty much how the, the first chunk of this manga goes. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a new job of the week. It's, uh, no consistent storyline pretty much until eventually we do meet some characters and it actually goes into its first storyline, which goes on for like 10, 15 chapters. And that's when it, that is the start of this shit getting really weird. You know, he meets an old college friend and he's considered like a god to most people and and they just try doing this weird subplot and talking about agendas and the state of the world based on of human actions and stuff and there's a lot of weird sex going on and I just wasn't digging it. You know, I was reading this I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. We're actually getting like some type of storyline. But at the same time, this is too weird for me, man. I don't know. And so, you know, that kind of happens. And he ends up leaving like he usually does. You know, he taught everybody um, a lesson, pretty much. And uh, there was a girl that he was um, dating at the time, but she was just using him. And she ends up falling for him, as most of the other women in this manga do. And she decides to leave everything and travel just like him. And I was like, oh, that's a nice way to end off this section and then she comes back after a good while you know Kentaro's just doing his thing she actually shows back up and that's when it starts really getting like not the manga anymore you know because she actually meets one of the first girls that Kentaro uh, met you know this high school girl who's in love with with who's in love with him and then, you know, they start talking back and forth about what true love is. And then they start getting into some weird shit again about politics, about environmentalism and just so much stuff that I did not expect or want in this manga, really. It's just super weird. It's just super weird because where I left off, I'm like, OK, we're literally in a VR world. Everybody's having sex with their ideal characters while they're bringing uh brainwashed by this ideal about how we need to stop being these greedy power hungry society 
and we need to move forward to living a free lifestyle and be super conscious about our actions the Kintaro way in a sense right that's what this lady has been instilling in people but from all the times we've seen Kintaro he's never brought any of this up at all you know he's just a fun go lucky guy who's you know a bit of a pervert and he just wants to study you know even when like there's some harsh stuff said at him and stuff you know and then they read like the notes that he wrote and it's just like oh he's actually been playing me the whole time where he actually understands what i'm talking about and is putting his counterpoints in this notebook you know he's not a confrontive guy from what we've seen and he tries to understand every aspect of everyone's opinions and then so when she's trying to um instill this mindset to all these people it doesn't make sense that's not kentaro you know from what i've been reading that's not his character at all and then it's also a clash with this other high school girl who has like who pretty much has an army to herself she's brainwashed people by making them drink her piss the golden water if you will and that's why people are obsessed with her her beauty and the fact that she'll that she'll let you drink her golden water you know has created created this cult mindset with all these people Woo, man that like i was reading it and i was like i still have how many chapters to go and this is still the arc like kintaro was nowhere to be seen for a good while in this arc which is you know the last stuff that's been translated and then he finally shows up and it's like oh he's actually working with her and i'm like okay this is kind of typical thing with kintaro and then um you know she's like okay go check the vr stuff and he's doing all this stuff this and that and then eventually he goes back again to to test out this hypnosis stuff that he says it is and now we get into this flashback arc of the woman that he met who died right it was the love of his life that she passed away when he was in college and she is the catalyst of his mindset of him leaving college him wanting to study the world and i'm like oh this is pretty cool but then reading the flashback i was like oh oh no they got everything that doesn't make sense for his character and they threw it in the flashback and then he's and then he starts talking like that in the flashback and i'm thinking whoa that's not even his character right now though he's not thinking about any of this stuff he's just traveling by bicycle across the country wanting to learn as much as he can trying to find his purpose you know and it just i don't know seeing the flashback just made me think like well the only reason they're talking like this is because that's what the topic is right now in the arc you know, I feel like if they were talking about something else in the story at the time, it would be a different conversation in the flashbacks. So that really is, um, that really sucks, I think, for the story wise. And, um, then he gets into a bunch of weird stuff, more sex, more all this and that. And I was like, man, I, and the art gets weird sometimes. And I was like, it's this inconsistency of art style and direction wasn't really sticking with me. And so that's pretty much where it left off, right in the middle of a flashback to slash present day stuff. And yeah, 94 chapters later, I wish I stopped super early on. And I, you know, I was already at a point where I'm like, well, okay, hopefully I was thinking this will just die down. This will, it'll go back to normal and then we'll just go from there. But no, no, it decides to do a bunch of other, all this weird shit, keep going that far and yeah, I just wasn't feeling it at the end of the day, which sucks. Uh, cause again, I like, I like the initial art style. I've heard things about it and I was like, yeah, let's check it out. And the beginning's good, but then once it gets into the weird shit, I'm like, no, thank you. Uh, this is not something I was expecting to read. It wasn't even hinted at at any point in the manga until we got into that arc where he met his old college friend and, like the people that are worshiping him and this girl that was like, oh, let's let's see how he can break. How is this the one person our God fears? You know, I need to understand why. And it just gets too weird for me. So I do not recommend Golden Boy as much as I was hoping to looking forward to it. Now, nah, it's not worth the read. Trust me, um, which is sad to say again. So. That's Golden Boy. That's all I have to say. That's all I will probably ever say about this manga. 
So, yeah, that'll be it for the episode, guys. Thanks for listening. And as always, remember, unversepodcast at gmail.com for those questions, comments, concerns. And you can email us, unversepodcast at gmail.com. Have you guys checked out Golden Boy? What are your thoughts on it? I would love to hear a contrast opinion on whether or not this is like a really good manga or whatever. And honestly, I can understand why the anime was, I think, six episodes. Because if you kept going, yeah, no, there's just no way you would want to keep going. Uh, the next manga on my list, I believe, is called The Climber. That's the English translation. Uh, so I'm going to be checking that out and hopefully get to, getting that to you guys soon. More content coming out this week, so be on the lookout for that. And again, thank you for listening, and we will talk to you next time.